Daughter, sister, uh, the chubby girl with long braids, social butterfly, the girl that would make you laugh, labels. These are all labels. I grew up during a time when Gloria Steinem was telling women that they had a voice, to use your voice. My own mother was telling me I can be whatever I wanted to be. And this was all while dinner was on the table at 5.30 and the house was clean and she made a safe environment for all of us. She would emerge from her sewing room with um, outfits, but not only for me, but for my Barbies. And this was also the place where that magic happened. This was the place where um, hand puppets came out of and, and beanbag animals and hand knit sweaters with delicately placed embroidered flowers and unbeknownst to anyone else, these were the places where she dropped the stitch. Um, what I didn't know at the time was that my mother had given up, well, not given up, she had put her own dream on the back burner, her dream of being an artist, her dream of being a designer, to instead be a mother and a wife. I would often sit by, by her, you know, when she was putting out and laying out her patterns and cutting and sewing, and I can be whatever I wanna be, I can be whatever I wanna be, I knew what I wanted to be, I wanted to be a designer and an entertainer and a veterinarian, and of course a princess, because I can be whatever I want to be. So when I was 13, I started dance class. When I was 14, I started voice lessons. By the time I was 16, I was singing in German, French, Latin, and Italian. I was singing in choirs. By 18, I was ranked the number one soprano in the Connecticut. Um, and by 18 and a half, my dad died. We knew it was coming, but you don't really think it's coming. So pivot. You're not going to go to conservatory. OK, OK. So I started going into New York. I started auditioning for shows and um, off-Broadway, Broadway, commercials, whatever I can find. I started auditioning. I got my equity card. Great, I got it, it's going on. I got commercials, I got movies, I earned my SAG card. This is it, this is what I'm doing. Then I went and I, was, and I got signed to Ford Models. And now I'm like, oh, this is it. I know what I wanna be, this is, this is my voice. And I would go to Dusseldorf and I would work on the runway and I would work for Givenchy and Petrizia S. And, and this, this was it. This, I felt it. I felt it. And then boom, the band that we were signed with, we were signed to CBS Records and then the writer's strike came on and the, and the, the show that we were gonna have our music on was suddenly no more. And I was, had been going to New York and LA for pilot season and the pilots were no more. And then boom, you have become too commercial for Ford, which means you're too old. Pivot. Okay, what do I do now? Um, well, I realized that I had been singing, you know, I was a singer and I, was a musician, and I was singing jingles, and I was singing backup, and I was wearing these clothes, and I realized that wasn't my voice, that was their voice. I was interpreting, but it wasn't mine. So I started taking classes at FIT. I will say my own voice. I will start my own clothing line, and that's what I did. I started my clothing line, then I became a costume designer, and these were all the things I loved, and I did. I loved it all. I loved the entertainment. I loved this, I loved this, I loved this. This was no longer my passion. I lost my voice. 
What was my voice? I can be whatever I want to be. So what was missing? Wife. Wife. I met my husband by chance meeting. He was attentive and charming and, and, uh, and cute. And my family loved him. My friends loved him. The only problem was he was on the other side of the country. This would never work. This would never work. So he was very determined to make it work. So um, I was thinking, you know what? Here's my princess. Is this my knight in shining armor? This is my prince who's going to take me away and protect me, and we will have this beautiful life together. This was the missing part. This was, this was I was his princess. This is it. So we married on a beautiful Bahat day in June, and everyone was there to celebrate and on this wonderful occasion. And um, this was my time. I was going to come full circle and had to have, to have dinner on the table at 5.30 and to make a clean house and a warm environment. Wait, is this my mom's voice? Well, my possessions were packed in the truck and they went off to its new adventure, the new adventure. And we hopped in the car to start our drive cross country. And you know, no longer, sooner had we started out on our journey, the light slip was, was flipped. And it started off small, you know, what, he, did, he didn't say that. He must not have said that. I, I think I heard that wrong. You know, we're tired. It's just we're tired. He would never say that. Um, he didn't mean it, you know, and I'm just being sensitive. And then it grew, and it grew to break her down, break down the wall, break down the self-esteem, break down her spirit. And... Then it came into, you call that art? You know, and this is the man who loved everything that I did. This is the man who loved the free spirit. This is the man who loved my art. This is the man who loved the creativity. He loved this. You call that art? What are you, gluing things together? <laughs> I could do that. Now you're just getting lazy. You're what are you nuts? I didn't say that. You're getting fat. You really want to do that? You want to wear that? What are you thinking? Why don't you get a job? No, not that job. Another job. You should get another job. And this started. This started happening. And it became very fast. And it's like the frog in the boiling water. You don't realize it's going on. This strong, this strong spirit was losing his voice again. And then came... The apologies, I'm so sorry. I wish you didn't make me do that. And the presence. And you know, then it was the gaslighting and, and everything with the narcissistic, misogynistic thing. And you know what? It was all a precursor to what I knew was going to happen next. And that was the physical. But as long as he was a fireman, he was a paramedic, he was a medic, he was a pillar of society, he was all these things. If you met him, he was the most amazing person on the world. As long as he was this, that would never happen. Not yet because he had his own story playing out. But this was not a victim label. I was not going to allow that one to come in. I instead had a stronger label that I was going to do, and that was survivor. I would not allow that to happen. So I came home to open arms, to encouragement, to support. Uh, but now what would I do? You can be 
whatever you want to be. All right, I became stronger. I reconnected. I started performing again, but this way it was my voice performing. I started creating my art again. I founded an art collective and I started to mentor artists. Uh, as far as my own voice, I found it in my art. I once again had something to say. I am daughter, sister, friend, survivor, entrepreneur, artist. I am Meg, and I am my own damn princess. <laughs> <laughs>